Hello, everyone. I will be getting started in just a moment. Okay. All right, everyone. Hello and welcome to Services for Independent Living Veterans Webinar for today. Our topic is Veterans and Centers for Independent Living. We are your neighborhood resource. Today's webinar has been brought to you by Services for Independent Living and the Ohio Department of Veteran Services. My name is India Jones. I am the Community <coughs> Services Manager here at Services for Independent Living, and I will also be your webinar facilitator for today. Just to go over a few housekeeping rules, all participants will be muted during the webinar. If you have any questions, please feel free to type them into the question box and we will attempt to answer them at the very end of the webinar. A recording will be available at our, on our website in our archive webinar section. Um, there is a copy of today's presentation available for download in the handout section. So if you would like to download, please feel free. And then there will also be a satisfaction survey that will pop up directly at the end of the webinar. If you have a moment, please uh, fill that out. It gives me more ideas on what kind of topics that you all would like to hear about and also just, you know, how we're doing um, as a whole. And then last but not least, if you would like to receive one CEU credit for attendance, and this is only offered to licensed social workers, licensed independent social workers, and social work assistants, please select yes on that particular question that will be on the survey that pops up at the very end of the webinar. So I'm very, very happy to introduce to you today, Chris Pika. He, Pika, he is the military and veteran community liaison from the Ohio Department of Veteran Services. Um, he took his time today to be here with us and he's going to talk to us a little bit more about their services and how we can access them. So I'm gonna go ahead and um, hand everything over to you now, Chris. Thank you so much for being here. And just let me know when you need me to go to the next slide, okay? Okay, thank you, India. <clears throat> yes, good morning, everyone. My name is Chris Pika. I'm with the Ohio Department of Veteran Services. Um, I was born and raised in a military family. I'm an Army veteran myself. I was a, an Army uh, medical logistics officer for about eight and a half years before leaving the service. Uh, I joined the uh, Ohio Department of Veterans Services in 2010 as the uh, 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 I was, <clears throat> pardon me, <clears throat> the Ohio Troops to Teachers Manager for about eight years before taking this position. And uh, one of the things that I've enjoyed about it is I've been able to travel all over the state of Ohio uh, working for veterans and partnering with other organizations that are working to uh, to serve our veteran population. So thank you very much for attending today. Uh, I'd like to talk a little bit about, um, well, but before we go to the next slide, India, uh, a little bit about Ohio veterans by the numbers. Uh, currently, there are approximately 733,000 veterans living in the state of Ohio. And of course, out of a state of uh, 11.8 million, that makes our veterans population about 6% of the population of the entire state. Uh, this is significant though, because uh, Ohio is also the sixth largest veterans population uh, in the country. So we have a, a relatively dense population of veterans living in the state of Ohio. They're not evenly scattered throughout the state, of course, the denser populations are located in the more densely populated counties like Cuyahoga, Franklin, Hamilton, Montgomery, and Summit counties uh, throughout the state. <clears throat> so uh, we'll go ahead and I can go ahead and move to the next slide. Thank you. Our web address is www.ohiovets.gov and I encourage uh, everyone to visit the site. Uh, there's lots of information on the site. There are, there's information about uh, other veterans organizations, links to other services throughout the state of Ohio, 
There's a complete directory of our county veterans service offices included at the, on the website. So keep that in mind. As I'm talking about some of these different uh, aspects of my organization, keep in mind too that we are a state organization. We are not the Veterans Administration. We are the State Department of Veterans Services. So we are focused on what's going on here in the state of Ohio. We do work with national organizations like the Veterans Administration, but we are not directly linked to that organization. Uh, nor are we directly linked to any of the other veteran service groups. We work and partner with those groups throughout the state. Uh, the organization was originally created as a cabinet level agency, uh, August 21, 2008. Uh, originally, it was the governor's office of veterans affairs. And part of the reason for changing to a state agency from just the, the governor's office was to oversee the many county veteran service offices that are located throughout the state of Ohio. These county veteran service offices are manned by county veteran service officers who provide information and guidance and advocacy, all free of charge, to our transitioning military and our veterans uh, throughout the state of Ohio. Our agency oversees these organizations, provides coordination and also annual training so that everything that they're doing uh, connected with the VA, they've got the latest up to date information. Uh, they can provide the most accurate guidance and advocacy for individuals that are thinking about leaving the service or who have already left the service and all those veterans out there who are currently uh, connected with or partially connected with services that uh, they may be entitled to. This is one of the greatest challenges that we have here in the state of Ohio, is getting our veterans connected to, their, to the services uh, to which they are eligible. We've got many veterans that don't associate with being veterans. We've worked with other groups, many groups throughout the state of Ohio that, uh, that are currently working with veterans and the veterans that they're working with don't even think of themselves as veterans. They don't sometimes even know that they're veterans. So this is part of the challenge that, that my agency has here. Uh, we do work with the Department of Veterans Affairs, uh, as well as with uh, various other veteran service organizations like the VFW, the Veterans of Foreign Wars, the American Legion, to name but a few. There are numerous other groups located throughout the various counties in Ohio that provide everything from therapeutic services equine therapy to name to name uh, one of the more uh, unusual services that are focused focused on veterans um, and of course my organization also has responsibility for the administration of our ohio veterans homes network here in the state of ohio currently consists of uh, two facilities one located up north in sandusky the other located down south in georgetown ohio and uh, we'll move to the next the next slide india Thank you. Uh, the uh, County Veteran Service Offices, uh, this is one of the many offices located throughout the state of Ohio. Um, there are, uh, I've, I've got a follow-up slide to this one, I believe. I'll go into more detail about those County Veteran Service Offices and the specific services that they can provide. But they are your first stop shop for all things veteran. So individ individuals that come to my agency and ask me for information, I usually try to find out what county they're living in and I direct them to the County Veteran Service Office, either by appointment or by walk-in. They take, uh, they, they take uh, people both ways. I've told people to grab their DD-214s, their discharge paperwork, and walk in and uh, find out about what, what they're eligible for. Um, many are surprised. Uh, we also coordinate programs and operations with the Department of Veterans Affairs. So programs and changes, uh, anything affecting individuals on the ground here in the state of Ohio. Uh, we work directly with those individuals uh, and also with the Department of Veterans Affairs. The Department of Veterans Affairs has wonderful people working in it. They're, they're great at providing advice and guidance. Sometimes it takes a little bit of additional assistance though to make things happen the right way. A lot of times the paperwork uh, isn't done properly or isn't, isn't done in the proper sequence. So this is one of the things that our county veteran service officers can provide. Um, one of the reasons for this is that uh, like with uh, a disability appeals, 
if a disability appeal isn't done in the correct order or if it's done, if there are missing parts, uh, the delays can extend into months and years sometimes. We, we hope to eliminate this as much as possible with our veterans. Uh, next slide, please. <clears throat> our county veterans offices, of course, provide assistance with all things VA. So we're talking about veterans uh, applications for disability. We're also talking about appeals uh, through time. Uh, disability ratings can change and often do. Uh, these offices also provide assistance for that. Uh, pension, healthcare enrollment, home loan guarantees, uh, GI Bill and other education benefits, survivor pension. Uh, many do not know this, but we have a, a widow and orphan scholarship program here in the state of Ohio. That is an educational benefit for anyone with a disability rating of over 60% you could be eligible to take advantage of the widow, orphan, and disabled veteran scholarship. We just changed the title of that program to include disabled veterans. Uh, the children of disabled veterans can receive from 80 to 100% uh, of tuition and fees for uh, college tuition. Uh, so that, that's, that's a, a program that uh, if you visit our website, you'll find out more about that. Uh, also, death and burial benefits are included as part of the County Veteran Service Office uh, offering. Uh, emergency financial assistance is often available, sometimes transportation. Uh, if you've lost copies of your discharge paperwork, your DD-214, for instance, you can get a new copy through the County Veteran Service Office just by contacting them and verifying your identity. Uh, any kinds of discharge corrections and upgrades. If you've got codes or information or incorrect information that you feel needs to be corrected on your DD-214, uh, please contact one of the officers. Uh, they can help you with that as well. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, other responsibilities that uh, the Department of Veterans Services has is to work with the Ohio General Assembly and congressional representatives to craft legislation in support of veterans and their families uh, throughout the state. We, we have a legislative uh, liaison that spends a lot of time working at the State House and communicating uh, information back and forth from the legislature, uh, from, from our office regarding uh, veterans' issues and areas of need. We also communicate and coordinate with other state agencies concerning veterans programs and support to veterans. Some of these agencies like the Department of Health, we've been in, in uh, close contact with uh, over the, uh, the COVID lockdown. With our uh, Ohio veterans homes, we've had concerns about uh, infection rates with our, with our residents at both the nursing home and also the domiciliary located up in Sandusky, Ohio. We've had to work very closely with that agency. Uh, we also work very closely with the Ohio Department of Education on educational benefits, education programs, and benefits that uh, other agencies may offer to veterans, encouraging them to, uh, to provide uh, consideration benefits and also to recognize the value of uh, veterans' experience when college campuses are looking at transfer credits and looking at granting credits for experience and for military education. So we work with, with the universities, the Department of Education, um, and, and many, many other agencies that are also involved in that process. Uh, we also administer the Ohio Veterans Bonus Program for veterans of the Persian Gulf era right now. We're kind of down to that population. We started out with offering bonuses to Ohioans who had entered the service, uh, who had been involved in uh, all the way back to World War II. Uh, of course, you know, through the years that the program has kind of gotten older and the funds have gotten smaller and smaller and we're focusing on pretty much just the, the last, uh, last individuals to serve in, in Afghanistan right now. So that's another program that we administer. Uh, next slide, please, India. We also manage another organization called the State Approving Agency. 
<clears throat> now this is a little known organization that has the unique responsibility of uh, monitoring students throughout the state of Ohio that are that are using the GI Bill. And uh, in the past, the GI Bill was a program that was used primarily for uh, college educations, tuition fees, and also uh, living arrangements for uh, veterans that were uh, enrolled in college programs. That program has been opened up to other career and technical organizations, apprenticeships, and on-the-job training programs that businesses might have. Uh, the uh, GI Bill money can be used to support those programs uh, and can also help to provide a bridge for veterans to leave the service, leave active duty, or retire and move into uh, civilian jobs and occupations. The SAA, the, the approving agency, can be contacted directly through our website and applications for uh, programs such as uh, credentialing, uh, those kinds of OJT programs, and uh, job-oriented career technical programs can be approved of uh, through, our, through that agency uh, for GI Bill support. We also host several veteran ceremonies each year, including the governor's reflame ceremony, that's to honor Ohio's killed in action. Uh, that um, ceremony is conducted annually. Uh, we also have something called the Ohio Veterans Hall of Fame induction ceremony that we host. Uh, we, we work with a committee that actually makes the selection and the committee generally selects 20 uh, citizens from Ohio, 20 veterans who following their service in the military have performed great things for, uh, for Ohio, have done something that either benefits both the veteran and the non-veteran population. So if you know of anyone, if you have anyone in mind who is a veteran who has done great things since leaving the service, uh, please visit the website. All the information is there. The uh, application forms and everything are also there for nominations. And we're looking for uh, nominations for next year's round of selections for the Ohio uh, Veterans Hall of Fame. We also have another organization called the Workforce Team. Our workforce team works with employers and other stakeholders throughout the state, uh, providing information resources for recruitment, hiring, and retention of veterans. And that program is broken down basically into eight modules where we talk about veteran hiring practices, military culture, veteran benefit and resources, uh, stereotypes and myths, interviewing veterans, mental health issues, creating a veteran hiring program, managing veterans, and an additional module just recently added on hiring veterans, uh, hiring military spouses. Um, all of these modules are uh, free of charge, offered to employers throughout the state of Ohio who are interested in recruiting, hiring, and retaining veterans. We work very closely with uh, Ohio Means Jobs and the Ohio Means Jobs website. We educate employers about the benefits of signing up as a veteran-friendly employer. And uh, uh, pretty much um, try, to, uh, try to advocate for our population as much as we can. When it comes to uh, benefits, we've found that uh, one of the most important benefits that a, a veteran can enjoy, uh, aside from everything else that we offer, is having a good job. So, okay. Next slide, please. Our mission is to provide opportunities and resources to our veterans and transitioning military communities through advocacy, collaboration, and partnerships. Well, as I previously mentioned, uh, the majority of our transitioning military, though, come from Wright-Patterson Air Force Base. So the majority of our veteran population, you can guess, uh, is basically from our National Guard and our, our reserve ranks. So many of our veterans have that as their, as their foundation and, uh, and, and the source of, of their uh, veteran classification. Uh, Wright-Patterson Air Force Base is the only fixed facility uh, located in Dayton, Ohio, that transitions active duty military and roughly 400 uh, individuals transition out of the military into civilian life every year through Wright-Patterson, through their transition assistance program. Next slide, please. Oh. 
just a quick overview of our locations throughout the state of Ohio. Our veterans home located up north in Sandusky, uh, the Georgetown home located down south and a little bit of a warmer climate in Georgetown, Ohio. <clears throat> However, if you are up in Sandusky and you're visiting the veterans home, you're not far from Cedar Point. So that's one of the one of the benefits, I guess, of, uh, of being up there near the lake. Our, our central office is located in Columbus, Ohio. And one of our newer offices, our Veterans Affairs Liaison Office, is located in Cleveland, downtown Cleveland. Uh, next slide, please. Central office is located in Columbus, Ohio, beautiful downtown Columbus at the Rife Center. We're on the seventh floor. Uh, this is also the same building where the governor's offices are located. Uh, it, it consists of approximately 25 to 30 uh, DVS administrative employees, including our director, assistant director, uh, and myself when I'm, when I'm in town, when I'm not traveling. Uh, next slide, please. Just a quick overview of the organization. The reason I kept this slide in here is to show you that we are not a very large organization. We're not a Department of Education. We're not a Department of Health. We have uh, uh, a relatively uh, few number of employees and administrators. A majority of our employees work at the homes in the form of clinical jobs, nurses, doctors, uh, other uh, clerical support, um, maintenance support employees and security are employed at the uh, Sandusky Veterans Home and down in Georgetown. Uh, next slide, please. The Veterans Affairs Regional Office, which is the newest office that we've established in Cleveland, was established in response to some of the issues with the paperwork, VA claims, uh, processing, other issues that individuals have experienced uh, working with disability claims and disability appeals throughout the state of Ohio. So this office is pretty much dedicated to assisting in special case management, uh, quality assurance uh, of claims work, assisting with claims that need immediate attention or even special management. It's a relatively small office, but does, does give us some presence in, up in Cleveland. Uh, next slide, please. Our Ohio Veterans Homes. Now, the state of Ohio uh, established these facilities uh, rather unique to the rest of our operation. Uh, we're kind of split in half. Uh, the healthcare mission that we provide through our Veterans Homes in the form of a nursing home located in Georgetown, which is a relatively smaller facility if you look at the nursing home in domiciliary located up north in Sandusky, Ohio. The uh, Nursing Home and Domiciliary uh, is the original uh, veterans home that was established here in Ohio. Uh, sometime after the Civil War, along with the County Veterans Service Offices, these uh, uh, facilities were constructed and established to support the, the needs following the Civil War. We were fortunate in Ohio to have a legislature that saw fit to, to put uh, a County Veterans Service Office in every county. And uh, we are also fortunate to have the two uh, veterans homes. Uh, of course, the, uh, the at, at, uh, what, being way up north in Sandusky uh, is somewhat of an issue uh, due to the uh, the cold winters. But uh, the the answer to that is to uh, to consider the uh, the southern location down in Georgetown. Uh, next slide, please, India. Uh, OVH Sandusky, Ohio Veterans Home Sandusky, was opened in 1888. And as I mentioned, it was uh, following the American Civil War that this, that this facility was constructed. This is a picture of the facility today, um, quite modern. Uh, and uh, this, this is the uh, building that is divided into the nursing home and the domiciliary. The, uh, the nursing home, of course, provides nursing home services to those in need of intensive and uh, more invasive care. The domiciliary is there for those who need uh, some attention, some support, some medical support, as well as uh, there are other uh, social benefits and spiritual benefits that we try to offer uh, at the home to provide uh, both 
the domiciliary uh, people and, and the nursing home people with, uh, with a complete um, supporting uh, uh, network uh, at the location on the campus. The campus also houses many historical buildings, and uh, I'll show you some of those later in the presentation, uh, give you an idea of how old this, uh, this facility is. Next slide, please. OVH Georgetown was opened in 2003, uh, located down on the scenic countryside of Brown County. It is a relatively smaller uh, campus than up north and uh, is solely, uh, uh, solely a nursing home. There is no domiciliary uh, located at Georgetown currently. Uh, next slide, please. The Ohio Veterans Home Department mission since the end of the Civil War has been basically the following, serving those who served with a safe living environment for residents so they can achieve their highest level of functional ability. Long-term around the clock medical and nursing care is also available together with recreational, social, and spiritual services to promote the resident's right to experience life to the fullest degree, regardless of age, race, creed, color, sex, or income. Uh, the only um, stipulation, and uh, we receive questions all the time about who's eligible for the uh, for veterans home admission. Uh, in general, but not all the time, uh, the uh, the veterans homes are open to veterans who served during some time of uh, armed conflict. So these are usually your uh, war veterans, uh, to the exclusion of uh, those who maybe served during a peacetime period. So that's the only stipulation uh, condition that we put on uh, admission to our uh, veterans homes and also domiciliary. Uh, next slide, please. So to the left and the right here is the original building that uh, <clears throat> was, is still, still standing up in Sandusky. This was the original Ohio veterans home. It, it housed uh, the, the clinical staff <clears throat> and some residential Today, it's no longer used for that. Uh, it's a museum and uh, an interesting collection of memorabilia that has, has been contributed by residents uh, since 1888 to the, to, the, to the present. So it's an interesting uh, uh, site to visit. There's a lot to see there. Uh, I highly recommend if you're, if you're up in Sandusky to uh, stop by and check out that museum. And of course, to the right here, you've got some of the, the original staff that worked at that building back in the old days. Uh, next slide, please. <clears throat> some more uh, historic pictures. Most of these old buildings have been demolished and replaced by newer buildings, uh, aside from the old main building that I just showed you, and some of our original residents and some of our original original employees that uh, worked at the facility. I love those uh, little hats that they used to wear back in the old days. Okay, uh, next slide, please. The Sandusky home up north is, is our largest with uh, 427 nursing home beds. And uh, of course, uh, 293 beds in the domiciliary. And as I previously mentioned, the domiciliary is there for veterans who require some medical support, but don't quite need the, uh, the intensity of care provided in a nursing home. The Georgetown home consists of 168 beds and uh, is uh, considerably smaller, a smaller facility, providing many of the same services that we provide up at the Sandusky home, a much smaller campus and uh, more of a nursing home focus than anything else. And uh, next slide, please. This concludes my uh, presentation. Uh, unless you have any questions, I, I don't know if I can take questions. Uh, yeah. Other than, so, okay. if anyone has okay. any questions, so I'll, I'll to read the, the questions to you, and um, you can answer them that way. So we'll go. We'll do that. Okay. 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 Thank All you. All right. So um, here's a question we have. It says, "My 92-year-old mom was recently sent an application." which it appears to need a lawyer to complete. Very involved. 
will the local offices help someone fill out the application or will they say it needs to be completed before coming in? Is this an application for uh, admission to uh, one of the Ohio veterans homes? Okay, so the person who asked that question, please um, type that response yeah. in and we'll be able to answer that more in depth. Okay. And then also, um, in the follow-up email, I will leave Chris's email in there. So that way, if you guys have more personal questions that you would like to reach out to kind of get his, you know, his idea or his um, advice on, um, you'll be able to do that as well. So I'll wait to see if that person um, does that. Um, okay. The other question we have is, um, how are veterans' benefits determined? Like, what, how does it make a person eligible? The, uh, yeah, veterans' benefits, um, ve veterans' eligibility is generally determined through uh, the U.S. government and the Veterans Administration. However, <clears throat> for purposes of finding out, for individuals to find out what their benefits are, um, I, I highly recommend contacting your local county veteran service office and making an appointment or even walking in. So many of these offices take walk-ins. Talk to one of the officers. We, we train these people. We provide annual training to these individuals and uh, they should be able to answer any questions based on your paperwork. Make sure you bring your DD-214 with you. If you're working on anything having to do with a disability, uh, either an application or an appeal, make sure that you, uh, you bring that paperwork with you as well. The officers there are trained to help you with all things VA and all things benefits oriented. So if you are eligible, based on your, based on your experience in the military, which should be evidenced on your DD-214, you'll find out uh, through that meeting. And okay. the individual there is, the individual also, the officer is there to help you with the process. They're not just there to give you information, they're there to, to, to provide you, they're, they're there as your advocate to help you with, okay, with, with the process. And it can be very, you know, there are other veterans organizations that do this. You know, you've, you may have heard of the VFW or, or the American Legion providing a similar mm -hmm. service. But uh, these offices, and of course it's also free, um, everything is free of charge. This is all, you know, paid for by uh, taxpayers' dollars. Okay. And so back to the previous question. Um, Yes. It is an examination for household status or permanent need for regular aid and attendance. Um, is, is, um, is, is this the, the is, is your mother, um, was your mother married to a veteran? I, I need to know that because you might be able to go okay, to, so that, the, again, true. you might be able to go to the county veterans office to get assistance okay. with that documentation. That's, that's another thing that they do. They provide assistance with, with uh, you know, other things that veterans are encountering. If you're, if you're having a hardship, if you, if you need financial assistance, if you need transportation, you can also contact the county veterans office for that as well. Okay, and they reply yes. Okay. Okay. Yes, what, what, in, in what can, if, if, if uh, let me see. I, uh, if you go to our website, you'll see a complete listing of all the county veteran service offices with phone numbers and emails there. Uh, I would say pick up the phone, give them a call, find out when it's good to come in and, uh, and drop in and see, and see your, your, uh, your vet rep at the, uh, at the office. Uh, if you're a veteran who hasn't, who, who's contacted the county veterans office in the past and you haven't talked to anybody in that office for, for a number of years, I also recommend reconnecting with the officer so that you can find out what updates and changes have occurred that might increase your benefits or might be helpful in, uh, you know, in planning what you're going to do with your veterans benefits in the future. Okay. And then someone wanted to know, um, do you have contact information for an address for a, a, the Cleveland facility? That's available through our website, www.ohiovets, right there on the screen. If you go to that website, you'll you'll see uh, yeah points of contact, uh, individuals that are are at that office. Okay, 
And then the last question I have for you, um, what are some ways to support veterans in a community? What are some ways to, to support veterans in the community? Yes, I guess like maybe volunteering or um, oh. donations. Or Absolutely. Uh, you could you could contact your county veterans again. I, I'm a, I send everybody to the county veterans service office nine times out of ten. Uh, there are some veterans that feel more comfortable working with some of the private uh, veterans groups like the, the the VFW and the American Legion. Uh, I, I'm I'm a member of the American Legion myself, and I'm also I also work for the Department of Veterans Services. There are other organizations like uh, the disabled. Uh, uh, veterans of DAV, uh, Disabled mm -hmm. American Veterans Organization, that you can contact, uh, the Wounded Warrior Project, uh, numerous organizations out there that, that, that you, can, uh, you can talk to about uh, helping out with uh, uh, veterans and veterans issues throughout the state of Ohio. Even at your employment, you might, if, if you're working in a large organization that has a, uh, a veterans uh, employment resource group we call them vergs you can mm -hmm. even join a veterans employment resource group at your uh, at your place of employment and assist management and other veterans in your organization at, at a very uh, local level so that's that's okay. another option and there's so many right, Chris. Ways. so i want to thank you so much for coming on here and um, taking some time to talk with us and i will make sure in the follow-up email i do um attach your email just in case they have some additional questions but like chris said um you can go right to the website and kind of uh, navigate and look for your particular area to you know be able to get the contact information for your the resources that you would need or are interested in in your area so um yes, yes thank you and um i hope to be able to do business with you in the future <laughs> Well, thank, thank you for the um, opportunity, Andy. I really appreciate it. And I appreciate everyone yeah. who, uh, who uh, signed in today and uh, listened to my, uh, to my overview. Uh, there is so much more information out there, and I, I just basically touched on some of the, uh, the basic points. But I really appreciate everyone's interest in, in helping our veterans. As a veteran myself, uh, I appreciate those out there, uh, all those veterans that are out there and their family members and members in the community like yourselves who are doing so much to help uh, our veteran population. Uh, thank you very much. Yes, thank you. And everyone, please stay safe. And if I don't see any of you on our next webinar, um, have a happy holiday and um, a happy new year because <laughs> we're almost right. there, you guys, I promise. <laughs> yep, all right, too, everybody all right. have a good one. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you.